Forensic Biology Screening Workshop, semen. Semen is a fluid of complex composition produced by the male sex organs. There is a cellular component, spermatozoa, and a fluid component, seminal plasma. Seminal plasma is composed of salts, sugars, lipids, enzymes, such as acid phosphatase, nutrients, proteins, hormones, basic amines, example spermine, P30, also known as prostate-specific antigen, and flavins, which are the source of fluorescence under UV light. The components originate from several sources including seminal vesicles and the prostate gland. The prostate is the source of the enzyme acid phosphatase and the protein prostate-specific antigen, PSA or the P30 protein. Seminal plasma lubricates the sperm duct or urethra. It is a nutritive and protective liquid medium for sperm to travel in and it is an alkaline environment which protects the sperm against the acidic nature of the vaginal tract. A vasectomy severs or ligates the ducts carrying the sperm to the penis. Visectomized men will have no sperm but will have the plasma components present in their ejaculate. Sperm are the male reproductive cells. Each consists of a head, tail, and midpiece. In humans, the head is a tiny disc about 4.5 micrometers long and 2.5 micrometers wide. The tail is about 40 micrometers long and is rapidly lost in ejaculates. The head of the sperm is where the DNA is preserved. Ape sperm are similar in size and shape to human sperm. Dogs have similarly shaped sperm but are about three times larger than human sperm. Other animals have differently shaped sperm. Sperm cells develop in the seminiferous tubules. Spermatogenesis has three phases. The first phase is spermatocytogenesis. During this phase, mitotic division occurs. The next phase is meiosis. Here, the diploid number present in the first phase becomes haploid. The last phase is spermiogenesis. Spherical sperm become elongated the acrosome forms and they are released from the seminiferous tubules. The sperm cells then move to the epididymis. Upon physical stimulation, the sperm and seminal fluid combine in the vas deferens to form semen. An ejaculate contains approximately 3 to 4 milliliters of semen and 70 to 150 million sperm. Here is a diagram showing a representation of the male reproductive system. There are many factors that can have an effect on spermatogenesis. They are genetic abnormalities, disease, injury, chemicals like chemotherapeutic agents, drugs, alcohol, and age. A sperm cell is composed of a head, midpiece, and tail. The head has an acrosome cap and this aids sperm entry to the egg. The head also houses the nuclear material, the DNA and it is approximately 4.5 micrometers long and 2.5 micrometers wide. The midpiece houses the mitochondria and this supplies the energy for the sperm cell. The tail is used for mobility and is made up of proteins. It is long and fragile and is the first part to break down and it is easily detached. The tail is about 40 micrometers long. This diagram is a representation of a sperm cell it shows the different parts of the sperm cell and what is contained in each part. For the analysis of semen, it is important to know that semen stains fluoresce under ultraviolet light. It is a common practice to visually assess items of evidence under UV light to locate possible semen stains. The intensity of the fluorescence can be affected by the substrate, concentration of the stain, and other body fluids. One presumptive test for semen is the acid phosphatase detection. Human semen contains high concentrations of acid phosphatase, also known as AP, which can therefore be the basis of a screening test. While AP is detected in high concentrations in semen, it can also be detected in other body fluids. Confirmatory tests for semen involve P30 identification because P30 is found in semen and microscopy which is the identification of sperm cells, and this is usually done using a staining method. Acid phosphatase degrades at a much faster rate than sperm cells. While presumptive tests for acid phosphatase can be helpful, a negative result 
does not necessarily mean semen is not present. Many laboratories conduct microscopic examinations on items that have negative AP test results, based on the circumstances of the case and evaluation of the item. Now let's go over some survival times of the components of seminal fluid that are used in forensic testing. On a dried stain, sperm, acid phosphatase, prostate-specific antigen, or P30, can last for years if properly stored. In the vagina or cervix, sperm and acid phosphatase last approximately three days. Sperm can last possibly longer. Prostate-specific antigen only lasts approximately one day. In the mouth, sperm can last up to approximately six hours. Acid phosphatase and prostate-specific antigen are less due to water solubility. And in the anal cavity, sperm can last approximately 9 to 20 hours, and acid phosphatase and prostate-specific antigen last a shorter period of time. Why do sperm survive longer? Sperm heads are very strong. They are designed to last to penetrate the egg. The proteins are water-soluble and break down quicker. Sperm tails are lost first. The tails are fragile and break off, and they are made of proteins which the bacteria attack first. This table shows results for acid phosphatase and sperm cells on a timed sex kit. Notice for acid phosphatase, the activity steadily decreases over time. For the sperm cells, the numbers decrease over time as well as the presence of tails on the sperm. This table only shows the microscopic results of a second timed sex kit. The 4 plus designation means that there are a lot of sperm present. Once again over time, the number of sperm cells as well as the number with tails are steadily decreasing. The third sex kit shows acid phosphatase activity and results of the microscopic exam. Because there are no sperm cells seen immediately after intercourse, there would be no need to look for sperm cells over time. However, just because no sperm cells are present, does that mean that other components of semen are not? This is shown by the presence of acid phosphatase, which as expected would decrease over time. Acid phosphatase is secreted from the prostate. It cleaves the phosphate group from molecules. For example, the conversion of phosphorylcholine to choline. Choline is important in cellular membrane composition and repair. Acid phosphatase, the BCIP test. To make the BCIP solution, you add 0.5 mg of 5-bromo-4-chloro-3-indolyl phosphate, which is known as BCIP, per milliliter of 0.01 molar acetate buffer at a pH of 5.5. Dissolve the BCIP in a few drops of dimethyl sulfoxide before bringing the solution to volume with acetate buffer. To store, the BCIP solution is stable for at least 4 weeks when stored at 4 degrees Celsius. To perform the test, swab the question stain with a slightly moistened swab. Place the swab into a tube with 200 microliters of BCIP substrate solution. Use the known semen stain as a positive control and an unstained swab as a negative control. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Acid phosphatase hydrolyzes BCIP and creates a blue color. Any blue color change is a positive result for phosphatase activity. Acid phosphatase, the AP spot test. Acid phosphatase cleaves the phosphate from an alpha naphthol phosphate to form naphthol. Naphthol and brentamine fast blue B forms a purple azo dye. The acid phosphatase AP spot test. To make this, first you must make the buffer. The buffer is made with 5 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. 10 grams of anhydrous sodium acetate, 0.24 molar, and 500 milliliters of distilled water. Solution A requires 250 milliliters of the buffer and 0.63 grams of sodium alpha naphthol phosphate. Solution B is made with 1.25 grams of fast blue B or nathanyl diazo blue B and 250 milliliters of the buffer. Both solutions can be combined for working solution in a spot test or used separately. For storage conditions, if purchased from a commercial supplier, follow the product insert regarding storage requirements. Solution A and Solution B can be stored frozen for months. Solution B should be stored in an amber bottle. 
Note, when solution A and B are combined, the reagent is not as stable as when stored separately. To perform the acid phosphatase spot test, take a small cutting of the question sample and place on filter paper or an absorbent pad, or swab the questioned evidence stain. Use a known semen stain as a positive control and an unstained swab or filter paper as a negative control. Add one drop of the AP spot test reagent if both solutions are combined, or one drop of each solution, A followed by B. The test is positive if a purple color is seen within one minute. It is negative if there is no color change, if there is a pink color change, or the color change occurs after one minute. False positives for the acid phosphatase test include vaginal acid phosphatase, fecal material, plant matter, spermicides, and some feminine hygiene products. Here is a video showing the two-step acid phosphatase test. The acid phosphatase spot test, also known as the AP test, is a presumptive test to indicate the presence of semen. After putting on appropriate protective gear, the analyst takes a small cutting of the suspected semen stain. Next, one to two drops of sodium alpha naphthyl phosphate is added to the cutting. The analyst then waits 30 seconds to assure that no color forms at this step. Then, another one to two drops of naphthenyl diazel blue, also known as fast blue B, is placed on the cutting. If positive, the cutting will change to a purple color, as seen here, indicating the presence of acid phosphatase, a component of semen. A positive result should be followed by a sperm search. And now here is a video showing the one-step acid phosphatase test. The acid phosphatase spot test, also known as the AP test, is a presumptive test to indicate the presence of semen. After putting on appropriate protective gear, the analyst takes a small cutting of the suspected semen stain. Next, one drop of the AP reagent is added to the cutting. The cutting should then change to a purple color, indicating the presence of acid phosphatase, a component of semen. A positive result should be followed by a sperm search. Acid phosphatase mapping. This is used on large items of evidence to screen for AP activity. It is made using the previous formulations described. However, solution A and solution B will now be placed into separate spray bottles. To perform AP mapping, lay out the item to be mapped onto a clean surface. Staple or otherwise attach the appropriate size of filter paper to a piece of plastic sheeting. Spray the paper with DI water until damp. Lay flat onto the item marking the position and orientation. The plastic sheeting should be on top. Press for 10 minutes, 15 minutes if blood is mixed with the semen. Use of a flat board or sheet of glass on top of the sheeting can aid in this process. After pressing, Hang the paper still attached to the plastic sheeting in a fume hood. Evenly spray the paper with solution A. Then, evenly spray with solution B. Let develop for 10 minutes. Positive stained areas appear purple. Positive stains should appear within 3 minutes. Weaker stains may take longer to appear, about 10 to 15 minutes. A known semen stain should have been used as a positive control, and a color reaction should occur within 1 minute. Do not go back and overlay the paper on the item and mark the orientation. This should have been done in the first steps. AP General Swabbing This is used on large items of evidence to screen for AP activity. Use a slightly moistened swab to test zones or sections of the large item. Follow the AP spot test or BCIP procedure. This technique allows the analyst to screen large items quickly. Prostate-specific antigen, or P30, is an antigen made in the prostate gland. It weighs 30,000 kilodaltons, and it liquefies the semen and is instrumental in dissolving the cervical mucus cap for sperm entry. Early detection of P30 was based on electrophoretic or double diffusion octoloni methods. These methods relied on the formation of visible precipitation of the sample and anti-P30 oftentimes followed by staining with Kamasi blue. The most widely used methods were crossover electrophoresis and rocket immunoelectrophoresis. For crossover electrophoresis, 
Anti-P30 is placed into a well of an agar gel opposite of the sample and allowed to electrophorese. The antigens and antibodies move toward each other and a precipitant is formed. Rocket immunoelectrophoresis. This is a technique in which samples are placed in a row of wells in an agar plate containing antiserum, anti-P30, and an electric field perpendicular to the line of the wells is applied. This drives the antigen through the gel, forming a spike or rocket precipitant pattern trailing away from each well. The length of the rocket is proportional to the amount of antigen placed in the well and is semi-quantitative. The ELISA test for semen. The ELISA was another method introduced to aid in semen identification. ELISA stands for Enzyme-Linked Immunosorbent Assay. The ELISA typically involves a two-stage incubated immunoreaction. First, the target antigen binds with a solid phase antibody. Non-bound materials are washed away and an enzyme-labeled antibody called a conjugate binds to form a sandwich complex. Finally, the antigen antibody is introduced to a substrate where a chromogen is used to give a color change indicating the presence of the antibody. This was shown to be a very sensitive method. Octoloni, electrophoresis, and ELISA methods are lab-intensive, and this led to the development of faster methods, the ABA card P30 and the Ceratac PSA semiquant. This card is semi-quantitative. There are slight differences between the two methods. These are what the results of the ABA card P30 would look like. A pink line in the C and T zones will be a positive. A pink line only in the C zone will be considered a negative, and no lines neither the C or T zone will be considered an invalid result. The ABA card P30 reaction occurs as follows. In the S area, there are mobile monoclonal anti-human prostate-specific antigen P30 antibodies. The prostate-specific antigen P30 antibodies bind to the prostate-specific antigen P30 antigens present in the sample. Together, they form an antibody-antigen complex. They travel through the card towards the T area. In the T area, there are stationary monoclonal anti-human prostate-specific antigen P30 antibodies. Stationary antibodies in the T area catch the mobile antigen-antibody complex and they form an antibody-antigen-antibody complex. These antibodies are labeled with a pink dye. When the antibodies aggregate, they form a pink line in the T area. Here is a short video on P30 analysis by the ABA card. The P30 analysis procedure by Abbott card allows for the identification of human semen. After putting on appropriate protective gear, the analyst will take a small cutting of the stain and place it in a microcentrifuge tube. The sample is incubated for two hours with gentle agitation. After two hours, the analyst removes the ABBA cards from the packages and places them on the table. Each card is then labeled with the appropriate sample name and controls. Next, the sample extract is added to the sample well labeled S on the test strip. A positive result is indicated by the presence of one pink line in the test area labeled T and another pink line in the control area labeled C. The Ceratec PSA Semiquan card has in its result window a control line, an internal standard, and a test line. The C area is an internal control which ensures the test card works properly. It binds excess mobile anti-human prostate-specific antigen P30 antibodies. The middle line is a semi-quantitative tool which is found in the Ceratex PSA semiquants only, and it aids in detecting semen concentration. In the T area, if a middle line is present, then there is approximately 4 nanograms per milliliter of P30. The more intense, the higher the concentration. The less intense, the less concentration. This diagram is a representation of what is occurring in the PSA card. If no PSA is present, then the mobile gold label antibodies will not bind to the T area where the anti-PSA antibody membrane is fixed. If there is PSA present, then they bind to the mobile gold labeled anti PSA antibody, and then together they move to the T zone, where they also bind to the anti PSA antibody membrane. 
as the concentration increases, a colored line is seen in the T area. Each method has noted a high dose hook effect. This occurs with excess prostate specific antigen, which binds to the stationary anti human antibody in the T area. This prevents the mobile antibody antigen complex from binding. This results in no pink line seen in the T area, which is considered a false negative. This can be overcome by diluting the sample and reanalysis. Notice with the high dose hook effect, the unlabeled PSAs bind to the anti PSA antibody membrane that is fixed in the T zone. The PSAs bound to the mobile gold label anti PSA antibodies cannot bind to the T zone. This results in no color line being seen at the T zone. The ABA card P30 test requires PBS, which is phosphate buffered saline, at a pH of 7.4, and the ABA card P30 kit. The PBS can be purchased if made in house, follow laboratory procedures, and for proper storage, look at the product inserts. To perform the test, place a small piece of sample material, 5 mm by 5 mm, in a 1.5 milliliter micro centrifuge tube. Add 250 microliters of 1x PBS to the tube. Incubate at room temperature for two hours with gentle agitation on a shaker. Pipette 200 microliters of the extract to the sample well S of the test strip. Some laboratories quality control check each kit with a 4 nanogram per microliter and a 10 nanogram per microliter dilution of P30. It is common practice to include a known semen standard as a positive control and a PBS as a negative control with each run set. Read the results at 10 minutes. A positive result is indicated by the presence of one pink line in the test area T at or before the 10 minute reading. A negative result is indicated by the absence of one pink line in the test area T. This may result from either the absence of PSA in the sample or it may be due to the high dose hook effect, which may give false negatives in the presence of high concentrations of PSA. If a high concentration of PSA is suspected, a 1 to 100 dilution of the sample may be made to and rerun to confirm the negative result. Results are invalid if no pink line is present in the control area, which is the C area. In this case, the test should be repeated. The Ceratec PSA Semiquant system also comes in a kit and requires PBS phosphate buffet saline at a pH of 7.4. To perform the Ceratec PSA Semiquant, place a small piece of sample material in a 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tube. Add approximately 250 microliters of 1x PBS to the tube. Incubate at room temperature for two hours with gentle agitation on a shaker. Pipette 200 microliters of the extract to the sample well of the test strip. Some laboratories quality control check each kit with a 4 nanogram per milliliter and a 10 nanogram per milliliter dilution of P30. It is common practice to include a known semen standard as a positive control and a PBS negative control with each run set. Read the result after a 10 minute incubation at room temperature. There should be no remaining fluid in the sample well at this time. An estimate of the amount of PSA can be done by comparison with the internal standard after 10 minutes. The intensities of the internal standard and the result may change after 10 minutes, resulting in incorrect readings. A negative result means there is no PSA or the PSA concentration is below the detection limit. A test result line T is not detectable. The appearance of the internal standard line and the control line C confirms the validity of the test. If a high concentration of PSA is suspected, a 1 to 100 dilution of the sample may be made to and rerun to confirm the negative result. A positive result means that PSA is detectable. The test line T, internal standard line, and control line C appear. An invalid result is indicated by the internal line and or control line C not being detectable. The assay should be repeated with a new test cassette. If the sample contains high amounts of PSA, it is possible that the color intensity of the control line will be weak. Microscopic examination. Sperm cells. Spermatozoa plural, spermatozoon is singular. These are the male reproductive cells, and they are haploid, 
which means that one copy of each homologous chromosome is present. Confirmation of the presence of semen is done by microscopically identifying sperm cells. The morphology and dimensions of the human spermatozoon are unique. Detection of sperm cells is simplified by histopathological staining. The most common stain is known as the Christmas tree stain because of the bright colors, connectrot pickerel integral carmine stain. It utilizes nuclear fast red that differentially stains the DNA containing head a bright crimson and a counter stain of picric acid indigo carmine that stains the tails green, blue, gray. How to make the stains? For solution one, dissolve five grams of aluminum sulfate in 100 milliliters of hot water. Then add 0.1 grams of nuclear fast red dye, cool and filter. For solution two, dissolve one gram of indigo carmine dye in 300 milliliters of saturated picric acid solution. The indigo carmine dye is 5,5-indigo sulfonic acid disodium salt. The solutions are relatively stable when stored at 4 degrees Celsius. If purchased commercially, follow the product insert for storage instructions. To perform the test, fix a smear or stain extract to the slide by gentle heating. A small cutting can be extracted in PBSO water, or a smear can be made directly on the slide using a small cutting. Add solution number one, the nuclear fast red to the smear or stain extract on the slide and allow to stand for five minutes. Rinse the slide with water. Next, add solution number two, the indigo carmine dye to the slide and allow to stand for three seconds. Rinse the slide with ethanol or methanol. Many procedures include the application of a cover slip using mounting media, for example, permount. All nuclear material will stain a red or red purple color. Background materials will be stained blue or green. A prepared semen slide should be available for comparison purposes. Spermatozoa will appear as differentially stained red bodies, somewhat oval in shape with a slight pink cast. The acrosomal cap will be stained less intensely red than the nuclear portion of the sperm head. If present, the midpiece and tail sections will be stained green or blue-green. It is common practice to grade the abundance of spermatozoa on the smear from 1 plus to 4 plus at 200x magnification, which aids in future DNA analysis. Some procedures require that spermatozoa be verified at 1000x magnification. Kind classification. The method of classification, originally published in 1965 by SS Kind, is as follows. Rare is less than 10 cells on a slide, 1 plus, few cells they are difficult to locate, 2 plus there are some cells in some fields, 3 plus some cells in many fields easy to locate, and 4 plus many cells in most fields. Some laboratories have made slight modifications to this rating scale. This diagram is a representation of a sperm cell after it has been stained. The head of the sperm is red, the tail is green, and the acrosome remains clear or faintly colored. Here is a digital image of stained sperm cells. Yeast, bacteria, free nuclei, white blood cells, and dog sperm are stained with this method, and in some instances can interfere with the identification of sperm cells. For identifying human sperm cells, always look for differential staining, the acrosomal cap, a tail if attached, and the size is larger than yeast or bacteria, but smaller than free nuclei or dog sperm. Having prepared human semen, dog semen, yeast and bacteria slides stained with KPIC should be available for comparison purposes. This video shows how to perform the Christmas tree stain. The Connectrot Picro Indigo Carmine stain, commonly called the Christmas tree stain, is used to identify the presence of spermatozoa cells in a sample. After putting on appropriate protective gear, the analyst must affix the stain to the slide with gentle heating. The first solution is then applied to the slide and set aside. After five minutes, the slide is rinsed with water and the second solution is added. The analyst then waits a few seconds and rinses the slide with ethanol. All nuclear material stains a red or red-purple color. Therefore, the head appears red with the acrosomal cap being a clear to pink color. If present, the mid-piece and tail sections will be stained green or blue-green. This is an example of what yeast cells look like under the microscope. 
Other stains, hemotoxylin and eosin staining. Hemotoxylin has an affinity for nuclear material in the presence of a metal. It stains nuclear material purple. Eosin is a counter stain. It stains non-nuclear material pink. Other types of staining include fluorescent staining, an example of sperm paints. These are fluorescent dyes mixed with monoclonal antibodies which bind to the sperm head and tail antigens. They are clear, bright, and selective and will not stain other tissues. Gyasma staining stains nuclei red. Microscopes. To clean the microscope, use lens paper and lens cleaner isopropyl alcohol solution for ocular lenses and glass surfaces over the light source. Use cotton swabs for smaller objective lenses. Here is a picture of a microscope commonly used for sperm searches. You should become familiar with the different parts of the microscope and their uses.